welcome to our outdoor adventure segment. Today, we are going to be fishing. Today, in this first segment, we're going to be covering the basics about fishing, what you need to keep in mind, and those tools that you need with us. So first and foremost, when you prepare for your fishing excursion, you're going to want to make sure that you get your fishing license. Fishing license can be obtained uh, both online and at a variety of different sites uh, or sh uh, little stores that might be in your community. Um, they are provided by Kentucky Fish and Wildlife. I completed mine online and was able to print it out and sign that form. So first and foremost, you're gonna wanna take care of this. In the state of Kentucky, the current prices are $7, I believe, for a day and 23 for an annual license. So make sure to start off by planning out your trip by getting your license, also consider your location and where you want to go fishing. Some of the best times of the year is to fish in some of your cooler seasons. You still want it warm, um, but spring and fall make for really nice times to go fishing, as well as summer. If you're going to go much in the summer season, you should know that fish don't just love hot weather. So they're going to stay in those cooler waters. So during the summer, you might have better luck on the morning or evening side of a summer day, whereas in the spring and the fall, during the day is perfectly fine. Those are some things to consider. You may have a lot of different lake resources close to you, such as state parks. Today, we're at Barren River State Park. Some other locations you might have is some public uh, fishing spots, those types of things. So plan out those trips and make sure to find a parent partner that's going to join you on your trip. Next, let's talk about the tools that you're going to need for your fishing experience. Today, of course, I'm going to need my fishing pole. Today's fishing pole is an open-faced pole, whereas a lot you may either be fishing. There's lots of different expensive types of poles out there. Um, some are more expensive, some are less. Today, I'm fishing with an open-faced uh, reel, whereas there's a lot of closed-faced reels as well. Today, I will demonstrate how to use the open face reel. Uh, the closed face reel, rather simple, similar in a lot of ways. If you can master open face, then you can definitely master a closed face reel. So we've got our reel. Of course, it's got fishing line on it. Um, and we'll talk as we actually go to threading our fishing line, we'll talk a little bit more about the parts of the fishing pole. Some other supplies that you're gonna need on you would be, of course, a bobber. The importance of a bobber helps to elevate or allow your hook to float on top. Uh, it keeps your, your, your line from sinking straight down to the bottom. It allows it to be elevated. It floats on top of the water and allows your hook to be elevated. Uh, you know, you can control the distance, whether your hook sits on the bottom of the, the lake or, or, or pond shore uh, on the bottom of that, or by moving your, your, uh, your bobber, you can actually elevate that. So bobbers are really important. Today, I also have with me weights. Uh, today, I'm working with a, a size five weight um, and, and I'll need some other equipment to be able to put some of these things on. Today, I also have with me a needle nose pliers that have a cutting capability as well. So pliers, and if you don't, you may even consider having some scissors because uh, you may need to cut your line as well. All right, last but not least, you're gonna definitely need a hook. I've got a larger one for cameras uh, view today. Uh, depending on the type of fish that you're, you're hoping to capture, the size of the hook uh, is really important. Some of your smaller species cannot catch a hook that's this large. It cannot bite onto that. So the size of your hook is really important in that. Of course, uh, as we mentioned, there's a lot of different bait options. Um, some of your bait options include one of my favorites, uh, either night crawlers or a, uh, the big red worms. Um, these are good go-tos just because they capture a little bit of everything. Uh, most all your fishes, fish are happy uh, with a type of, of worm um, of some shape or form. But of course, uh, as we're gonna kind of preview, there's lots of other types of bait or artificial types of hooks and baits out there. All right, during this next segment, we're gonna be talking about how to prepare your pole. Uh, in the previous segment, we talked about, you know, what supplies and how to get started and some things to consider before you start your fishing 
excursion. Next, we're going to talk about how to prepare your pole. So, of course, I've got an open face pole, as I pre mentioned in our previous video, um, with a 10 pound weight line. Um, we're going to run this through the eyes of the fishing pole. So, I have left this loose intentionally so that I can demonstrate for you all. Run it through each of the eyes from the bottom side of the eye all the way up. The larger eyes at the bottom, or the eyes at the bottom are a little bit larger, whereas these top eyes are, get a little bit smaller. All right, now that we have ran that up, I'm gonna stop my line. One of the neat elements, aspects of the open face line is the fact that uh, like, an, uh, uh, like a closed face fishing pole, uh, which it's enclosed all inside, you have a button and it's pretty simple. When you're ready to cast, you're going to simply on a close face, you're gonna simply press that button and lean back at a 90 degree angle and cast out. With the open face, it's a bit different. Uh, you actually flip this lever here when you're ready to cast and release your line. So there's a big difference between the two types of fishing poles. Once you've got your line ran on here, uh, next what we're gonna do is prepare by putting on our bobber. Now, knowing today and the depths of my water or having a pretty good idea for that is pretty important. So today I'm looking, I know that uh, I would like uh, my fish that, I'm, uh, that I'm, I'm fishing for today are gonna be pretty close to the shore, uh, but my water is kind of deep. So I'm going to allow for about two and a half feet worth of line. Uh, and that's where I'm gonna place my bobber. So knowing what you're fishing for, knowing what you're fishing for and then uh, knowing, you know, uh, you know, the depths of your water is really beneficial for being prepared, um, to set your bobber. Once again, the bobber is really important. If you don't have the bobber, you can still fish, but this elevates literally my hook at the bottom, uh, from sinking all the way to the ground, making it much harder for my fish to find my hook. Therefore, bobber is really important. Also important is our weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my weight on before I place my hook on. Today I've got a five weight here. So um, you're gonna go down to the last, um, you want to weight down closer to the hook. So I'm gonna go about six inches from where my hook's gonna be at. I have my needle nose pliers. Your weight here has two different sides. One is gonna be an open face side uh, that has a, a that kind of goes down into like a cut as as if it's cut down into the weight. Whereas the open side has a bird beak type of end. You're going to place the cut side with the gripper teeth in the line, the line on that side, and you're going to use your needle no nose pliers with good force to close your weight around your around your line. If we weren't happy with where our weight was at then we could simply just open our weight up by pressing on the other side of the weight where the bird's beak shape is. Next, pretty simple, we're gonna go with our hook. So today I'm fishing for some smaller species, so I'm using a much smaller hook, and this is what I'm working with today. First, I'm gonna describe how to do, uh, how to tie your hook, and then we're gonna do a close demonstration of what how you should tie that hook. So first and foremost, I'm gonna run my thread through the, the hook eye, allowing for a couple of inches of line. Okay, got a couple inches of line. Then I'm going to do five twists. I'm gonna twist the line around five times. After I've twisted it five times, I'm going to take the end, tail end of the line, place it inside of the loop created by the, by the line, not the eye of the hook, but by the line. And then finally, I'm going to place that tail end that went through the first loop, through the, the loop that I just created. So it goes through two loops and then pull tight. So that's how you tie your hook. Uh, you want to, if you've got a lot of excess line, you're gonna wanna use your pliers to remove the excess off of there after you've made sure it's tight. All right, so we're gonna now 
do a close-up of how to tie your hook. So for today's demonstrational purposes, for a close-up, we're working with paracord and just a eye hook fastener so that we can see what the close-up might look like for actually tying your hook. So imagine this fastener is the eye of the hook. We're gonna take our line, which is our blue paracord, and we're gonna run it through, okay? Once we've run it through, allowing for a couple inches of a tail, we're going to take our fishing line and we're gonna loop it around five times. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we've looped it five times. This loop right here, now you've got two loops, so I don't want you confused. The loop created by the fishing line, not the eye of your hook, but by your fishing line, you're gonna take your end and run it through there, just like that. But in order to finish this out, we need to go back through our, our created, uh, it kind of looks a bit like a wreath, our last loop in order to tighten it up. And then we're going to slide it down on the hook just like that and voila, this is a fisher's tie. There's lots of different ties you can accomplish for fishing. Um, and, but the paracord does a good job of demonstrating, you know, that, that five twist method through the loop and through the final loop, pull tight, pull down and pull tight. And there you go. You've got a great tight knot for your fishing hook. Last but not least, we're going to want bait. Like I said, today we're going to work with worms because a lot of our species like worms. So today I'm working with big, big red crawlers that we picked up from the bait store. Of course, there's no reason that you can't search for worms, especially if you forget or you just want to save a little bit of money. There's no reason that you can't actually go out, um, find you a damp, soft spot in the soil and just dig for worms. Today I'm not going to use this entire size worm, so I'm going to split it in half. If you feel more comfortable, you're also welcome to, uh, you can also, uh, you know, cut these in half if you'd rather not split them by hand. Then I don't have a very big hook here. I've got a pretty good size worm. I'm gonna run the hook up the inside of the worm and kind of snake it on top. Uh, the major point, there's no right or wrong way to do this per se, but your biggest part is your worm needs to stay on your hook. So even if you kind of go through your worm a couple of times, just like that, I've got enough of my worm revealed that my fish is going to eagerly have a nice snack awaiting him. And that is how you prepare your pole uh, for fishing. Now we're gonna learn how to cast. Now, I only have a open-faced reel, so that's what we're gonna practice with today. This is a little bit more complex than a closed face reel, but it's pretty similar. So typically with an open face reel, you're gonna hold it in your dominant hand, sliding uh, you know, three fingers of your hand underneath the ledge here, and then placing one finger, allowing your index finger to capture the line, like that. So when we go to, when we go to preparing to cast our line, we're gonna flip our lever up, this is going to, flipping it up, allows the line to run loose. For today's purposes, I have a weight, a casting weight at the very top of my pole here. This is a great way to practice. There are also some kid uh, casting friendly um, kind of weights that you can purchase as well. Uh, I re definitely recommend spend some good time casting and learning how to do that. Uh, that's going to safe proof and kind of help you out in the fishing. So you'll have a lot more fun when you finally get out on the lake. Additionally, you want to avoid, of course, uh, different things to keep in mind when you're casting. So when you're casting or when you're going fishing, you want to find facilities that don't have a lot of trees. This place right here, there's an opening in the tra trees here at Barren River Lake. So while, you know, an open-faced pond is, you know, most preferable, uh, with the water levels high, we have found a nice spot and a nice opening with the trees. So make sure when you're casting to avoid trees where your bobbers or your other, your line might be caught on. So once you've identified a good space, you've got your line, you've got a weight, or you are actually ready, you've got your hook prepared with your bobber and everything, and you're ready to cast. With this open face reel, once again, I'm gonna turn our lever here, hold my index finger on top of the line, and then 
using a 90 degree angle, I'm going to lean the pole back. And as I release at about a 45 degree angle this direction, I'm going to release my finger off the line here. And that's going to allow the line to sail out in front of me. Uh, releasing too soon will cause the weight to drop forward. So let's go through a couple of casting scenarios. To proper, properly cast, you want to release at a 45 degree angle. Starting at 90 degrees back, I'm going to swing my arm over and release at a 45 degree angle and reel in. In this next portion, we're going to show what happens if you release too late. So you're going to start at a far back 90 degree angle, but if you wait too late to let off your finger and you get at a 180 degree angle, this is what's going to happen. And it's going to plop real far down. Now mine went out a couple of feet, but other scenarios might look like the weight or your, your hook dropping right below uh, just a, a feet or two out from you. So that's a scenario you don't want. We didn't get very far with that. And then if you cast too soon, you release your line too soon, you may end up releasing it really high, which may cause it to land in the trees and those sorts of things. So when you're casting, remember to uh, place your finger on your line here. Once again, place finger on the line, 90 degree angle, have your pole out. You're going to release your finger when you get to a 45 degree angle at your swing. Before you swing, you're gonna allow your lever to release and you're going to release at 45 degrees. 